Hey horror fans, it is Pete here from the Lasso Cast, and it is time to add yet another book to my top 10 horror books of 2022 list. This time around, we are talking about the book Maggot Screaming, which was written by Max Booth III. Max is the very first writer that we've ever interviewed on the Lasso Cast channel, and I was extremely excited to have him back on. Besides Maggot Screaming, Max is also going to take a little bit of time to talk about a Kickstarter that he has set up for his Ghoulish Books imprint. And that Kickstarter is actually starting at the very beginning of 2023 in the first week of January. So make sure you go down in the description and there should be a link to Ghoulish Books and also to that Kickstarter. And you can check out how you can get Ghoulish Books for the entire year of 2023. So sit back and relax. And enjoy this interview between me and Max Booth III. Today, I am super excited because Max Booth III is the very first author we ever interviewed for the Lasso Cast channel. And so he is uh, one of the co uh, creators of Ghoulish Books, which is an imprint of Perpetual Motion, Publish Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing, right? I got it right. Okay, good. And uh, he has written such books as Touch the Night, uh, Maggot Screaming, which we will talk about today, and also We Need to Do Something, which was made into a feature film that Danny and I covered. So, Max, thank you so much for coming back on the show. Thank you for having me. When was I on? Was it like uh, September 2020? 21, maybe? 2020. That's right. That's exactly yeah. right. It was like right when the movie was coming out. Yeah. and. Yeah, and we're really happy to have you on. And since then, I've gone to the Ghoulish Book Festival, and we've had a whole bunch of people on the show that have had books published by Ghoulish, too. Excellent. Well, thank you yeah. so much for all the support. We definitely appreciate it. Yes, and I heard that there is something that you could use some support on coming up, which is a special Kickstarter, right? Um, beginning January 5th and lasting throughout the month, we will have a Kickstarter which is basically a way to pre-order all the books we will be releasing in 2023 as one big package. So we have uh, 10 uh, books coming out plus three issues of two different magazines. So it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty stressful, huge uh, project we all trying to push. Yeah, that's awesome. Are you able to divulge like who's going to be involved, like which authors? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So the three, the it's two magazines. One is an issue of a magazine called Night Frights. It will be issue three of Night Frights. That is a young adult little magazine we do. And then we will be doing two issues of a brand new magazine called Ghoulish Tales. Okay. So it'll be, uh, you know, like just some creepy short stories and essays. So those two will be coming out in April and October of 2023. And the main books we have coming out, we have a book by Shelley Lyons called Like Real. It's a body hole rom-com about a guy who loses his hand and it is he goes to a, like a spooky, goofy uh, scientist who replaces it. And the hand has a brain of its own and it has its own uh, needs and desires. And soon the man finds himself competing with this hand for the love of, of a woman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a book called uh, Excrement Mountain by Andrew Hillbilt, spelled without any vowels. So uh, X C L M N T M N T N. And that is about this uh, insane Italian uh, filmmaker who takes advantage of an alien mountain of shit that lands in Austin, Texas to make his new movie. It's, uh, it's really strange. Jesus, okay. We'll, we have been pitching that one as um, the Greasy Strangle meets uh, a Milliken movie, which is a great movie yeah. if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah. Then we have an, an anthology called Bound in Flesh, an anthology of trans body who mm -hmm. edited by uh, Lil Gislason. I do not know if I said the last name correctly. I've never said it out loud until now. I do not <laughs> think I said it correctly, and I do apologize if I fucked that up. Yeah. That is uh, exactly what the subtitle says. 
an anthology of trans body who really exciting that's coming out in april it will launch at the next ghoulish book fest same with a lot of these books they will a lot of the authors will be at the fest to promote the book like jessica lenold who will be at the fest promoting her new novel conjuring the witch and uh, she is mostly known for the last books we put out by Jessica called Antioch. So Conjoin the Witch is the latest book she's written. If you like witches, you will like this book. Then we have What Happened yes. Was Impossible by E.F. Schradle. That's kind of a we need to talk about Kevin meets a Millican psycho type of novella. That's, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, they're going to be coming to the convention as well that but if you don't come to the venture, the book comes out in May, I believe, is what we decided. <laughs> um, we also have The Only Safe Place Left is The Delk by Will and Wagnall. This is a book that takes place during the zombie apocalypse. And the protagonist is a gay man with uh, AIDS. And basically he loses his medication. And he has to leave his cabin to find new medication while fighting zombies. Wow. Um, then we have The Screaming Child by Scott Adlerberg. He, I've been a huge fan of his real cool yields. I've been begging him to uh, write a book for us for like a decade now. He finally oh, wow. did, and it's amazing. It's about a woman whose son vanishes, most likely dies, but the body is never found. Everyone believes the kid is dead. They suspect the mom might have been involved. The mom... Go decides to leave town goes to goes to a cabin in the woods to get away and continue uh finishing a book she's writing and she okay. begins hearing a scream in the woods that she is convinced is the scream of her child okay so that's all i'll say about that one um okay. that's coming out in july okay next up in september we have rainbow filth by Tim Mile, and this is a book about a mysterious drug that possibly opens a uh, passageway into different realities. Oh, okay. It's really trippy, psychedelic. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Then we have Let the Woods Keep Your Bodies by E.M. Roy. This is a novel. Most of the books I'm talking about are novellas. There's a few novels. Um, okay. Shelley Lyons' Like Real is a novel. Um conjuring the witch is a novel and then what the woods keep old bodies is also a novel and this is em roy's debut novel it's it's about a a young woman in a small town in maine whose uh girlfriend goes missing and she is blamed basically but the woods will not what they seem so okay. uh -huh. uh, i think i think we were pitching it as my best friend's exorcism meets Twin Peaks. It's oh. pretty. It's pretty uh, awesome. I'm okay. really excited I'm about that. this book. Yeah. And then the last one we we're doing is called Saint Grit by Kaylee Schultz, and this is a book about a woman who uh, conjures a witch by masturbating in the woods. <laughs> and the uh, the Kevil Elt is so obscene, so great that we won't be able to sell it online. Besides the Webster, we have commissioned a censored version to sell like an Amazon and Bill and Noble, but right. due to the <laughs> graphic nudity on the main cover, we will only be selling it through Kickstarter, um, the Ghoulish Books website, and at conventions. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's the last one. So with the Kickstarter we have going on, we have a way for people to uh, buy all these books in one lump sum. You can do yeah. like... Uh, it's like 30 bucks, you get all all these books. So if you do like 300, you get all the physical books along with the audiobooks, the ebooks, a big box of bonuses like um, um, metal book milks and pens and bumper stickles and uh, all types of cool, fun stuff. You know what's interesting is that pretty much every single author you just described, yeah. I've not read one of their books before. But that also goes for every author of a ghoulish book that I've read so far. And so I think that like, that's one of the best things about your festival. And that's one of the best things about your imprint is that it just has made me aware of so many different authors. I'm, um, so, I'm so glad to hear that. And one thing that I thought was pretty cool with, especially this lineup we have coming out is the majority of them have never published the book before. So oh, a lot of these okay. are debuts. Okay. 
Yeah, so that's also why you don't really know anything about them. But I think maybe three of these authors have as old books out. The rest will just debut authors. Oh, okay. it, wasn't, it wasn't intentional. That's just the way it ended up. And I mean, we did an open call for submission back at the beginning of 2022, which is how we got the lineup for 2023 and 2020 fill real book salad for the next two yields. Yeah. And we re we got we uh, received submissions from authors I love who are quite famous in the scene, and uh, they were rejected compared to some of the books we have coming out next year. Really? I mean, yeah, just due to the quality of these books. Yeah. Well, is there a like guideline that you guys use when you're looking for specific books? Like, like what is the idea behind ghoulish books itself? Like, what is like, oh, this is a ghoulish book versus this is not a ghoulish book. Hmm. It's not, I guess I don't have like a strict guideline. It just had to really get my attention. Okay. And I've been using the real ghoulish for a few years now. Yeah. And it seems to has it seems to have developed its own special definition when I think about it, which is yeah. it makes spookiness fun, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So like that's kind of what I'm looking for. Am I having a good time? It's just fun is it spooky is it sleazy maybe i like a good sleaze yeah like i uh, say uh saint grit that book is really uh perverted and fucked up and it's a delightful time i i, I when we when we announced it we uh pitched it as the craft meets gummo <laughs> oh jesus okay wow so, yeah yeah well you know um i remember when we had the when you had the ghoulish book festival you did a um campfire event where like authors could tell stories and you played your theme song from your podcast and i love the theme song from your podcast too um like when you're talking about ghoulish having its own identity i kind of associate it with the icon for your podcast and i also associate it with that theme song too oh that's awesome that's that's pretty much the goal i have so that's great to hear and yeah. uh ethanish kid did the theme song aka kelby losak who has written many great books the, the Ghoulish Book Festival, if people haven't gone to it, it was one of the best experiences I ever had in, in my life. And I talk about it often. Uh, if I ever talk to other writers, I'm like, hey, you guys should go to this or you, know, you should check it out. Because it was just like so intimate. And the location itself was just mm -hmm. perfect. You know, like that building, it, it like doubles as like a church and like a bowling alley too, it, right? It's, it's a bunch of crazy things. I don't, I don't yeah. understand it. The, the reason we came upon that building, which is a Hillman Sons building i guess is what it's called is my fiance she teaches dance for the company that owns the building and so that's where she teaches dance in san antonio <laughs> so oh, okay. we were able to get a discount on the nice. building yeah um it's really odd and there's a lot of uh, potentially problematic uh uh pictures framed around the place of just a lot of white guys in black and white looking at you it's like ah yeah. I don't want to know what your baggage is. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, for a guy that's 29, like, you've certainly done a lot. You know, like, you have this festival, you have the second one coming up this year, then you're you're doing this Kickstarter, and you have this imprint. Like, it, how is this not, like, overwhelming to do all this stuff? Well, that question implies it isn't overwhelming, and it is. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Is it, like, more than a full-time job, like, your entire day just working on, like, your writing and getting books out there? Like, does it just take up pretty much, like, all of your waking hours? Yeah, it does. It's mostly just the publishing. I haven't had a ton of time to get in my own writing lately. Yeah. Um, like, for instance, we are refilling this in the middle of December, and I am deep into uh, Kickstarter prep. So the past two days specifically, I woke up around 8 o'clock, and I uh, just did Kickstarter stuff until I fell asleep yeah. <laughs> at night. Besides, like, cooking and doing the dishes. Yeah. I was, uh, yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty intense. Hopefully, once this campaign is done... Now, I was going to say I'll have some time to relax, but no, not really, because then we have to get the books out and begin promoting the the book convention. And yeah. plus, if we do the show every month, and I do have books I do need to write that I am under contract to write. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you're a uh, bride to be, right? Laurie and Michelle, yeah. right? You guys are going to get married at the next book, uh, Ghoulish Book Festival, right? 
Yes. <laughs> because yeah. we don't have time to do it any other time. <laughs> right, right. It's like, why don't we just combine these two events? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, two birds with one stone. I like that. But, like, um, is is it because, like, is she, like, super supportive? I know that she's essentially your partner in this. But is it, like, oh, yeah. you two just kind of sort of just feed off each other, essentially, like, with your excitement and enthusiasm? I think so, yeah. I mean, without... I mean, the company doesn't exist without both of us. Right. Because I'm, I would say, I, just because I do no social media stuff and she does, I've become the face of it. Sure. But she's, the, she's the smelt one who doesn't really give a shit about social media. I, yeah. uh, <laughs> I wish I could also be like that. But yeah, I mean, I do the, the public stuff mostly, and I do the editing and a lot of the promotion. But she designs the insides of every one of these books. She is filmating them all. She is handling all the budgeting and royalties. She's definitely the CFO, I guess you would say. So she's she's the responsible one. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I wouldn't know how to do any of that. Yeah. When it comes time to deciding which books are going to be published by Ghoulish, is it a joint decision or is like one of you the final say? I typically read the book slush myself and I okay. will compile a list of the ones I definitely want. But if there's any, if there's any that I'm on the fence about, like say I want to do both of these, but I know we can only do one. I'll have to read them both and make the final decision. But pretty much I decide with the books themselves. But when we do like magazines or anthologies, it's pretty uh, evenly split and balanced of how we decide on the final table of contents. Yeah. Well, um, when I think about the ghoulish books that I've read, I think about the very first one that came out, which was Below by, um, oh, shit. Laurel Hightower. Laurel Hightower. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's bad because she's like one of the few writers that actually like consistently writes to me on Twitter and shit. <laughs> but like, um, no, she's she's awesome. I love Laurel Hightower, and um, I interviewed her on this channel too. And um, so I interviewed her, and I interviewed Danger Slater, who did Moonfellows, which is another ghoulish book, right? And I was trying to think like, what is similar among these two books? And I know that you said that you want to essentially be entertained. You want yeah. something that is potentially sleazy or <laughs> you know like yeah. delightful. But then I was thinking that you've also said before that you enjoy like kind of like isolation. Mm -hmm. horror like where I it's do. a few people right and i was thinking that with below and with moonfellows it essentially is about being alone for the most part both stories mm -hmm. absolutely yeah i mean the the two stories are so different in like tone and and subject matter but like i think that core concept makes them similar i would say so yeah and they look extremely different and what, something else I would say that does influence about what we want to publish is also the author themselves sometimes has like something to do with that. Like Daniel Sladel is someone I've read a lot. I know he's a lot of fun to um, hang out with. I know he hustles his own books. I know he is consistently a good writer. So like if he wants to do something with me, it's like, a well, yeah, obviously I want to do something with you as well. Yeah, it's gonna be a good. It's gonna be a good experience. Yeah, yeah. He was he was a real pleasure to interview, and I just think he's a fun guy. He's mm -hmm. he's kind of like you. Like both of you guys have these presences on Twitter, where like I think a lot of the stuff you post is real funny. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then I was gonna say that uh, there's another book that you were talking about recently, um, Perfect Union mm -hmm. by Cody Goodfellow, and. Um, that book had been out of print, right, from a previous publisher, and then you guys yeah. like, brought it back? I think it came out in 2010. Yeah. Printed, yeah. And we just put it out, and it's a it's one of my favorite Cody Goodfellow books coming from a guy who is consistently awesome with anything he puts out. He has a pretty hefty um, publication history, I would say, and I've read all the books he's put out, but I've read quite a few, and I think – Philfic Union is maybe my favorite one of his. And the reason we ended up reprinting it was I had just uh, like read reviews of the book and I thought this sounds awesome. I would love to read it, but it was out of print. So I emailed Cody and I said, Hey, can I, can I read that? Do you have a copy of it? I can read. And then in parentheses, I think I said, maybe we could reprint it, but I mostly just wanted to read it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, you know, 
that's the first book of his I've ever read. And yeah. I, I just loved it. And um, I did a little research on him and uh, he was talking about his book, The Flying Nun. And that's another yeah. book that you guys put out as well, right? Yeah, we've done two of his books, and those are the two. Yeah. And so essentially like that one, if, if I heard the story right, it's that uh, a, an artist put out that picture that's the cover of the book. And he's like, what would I title this? And then Cody wrote uh, The Flying Nun, but spelled it N-O-N-E. Mm -hmm. And then you essentially like reached out and was like, I got the rights to this, right? Is that how that works? Yeah, I, uh, I uh, went and bought the Kevil, the elk milk from Matthew Revilt, who did it. And then I DM'd Cody and I said, Well, I bought it. Now you have to write this book. And then he did. Holy shit. That's also I want to check that book out because I mean what he said about it sounded really interesting. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's really much uh it's just I wouldn't call it I wouldn't put it in the uh the hoodle genre at all. It's more of a just a comedy. Okay. It's a good time. <laughs> if you like, if you like Angel Slatel, you will like the Flying Nun. I would say. Okay. Well, that, that sounds like I will then. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about your own writing then too. Okay. Uh, I just read Maggot Screaming, and I have to say that I, I'm going to make a top ten list for 2022, and I want to put Maggot Screaming on it. I love Maggot cool. Screaming. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you talk about it being a good time and it being funny. Maggot Screaming is hilarious. Uh, but besides that, I also think that um, it has like the most unique starting premise I think I've read in a long time. And so I didn't, I don't ever want to like spoil books when I talk about them on the channel, but I don't think I've ever seen something like the, the initial supernatural element that you have in your story. Like essentially yeah. what drives the whole story is based on this one incident. And so are there any other books that are even like that? Um, probably Daniel Sladel's books are similar, I would say. Like, uh, He Digs a Grave, I think is the title. Uh, Impossible James. All, a lot of his books have those type of uh, bizarro concepts. I would recommend him. Um, Malik, Carlton Malik the Third. He yeah. has really good books that might be kind of similar. So those two are thoughts, I think I would... Yeah. recommend you would label maggot screaming as bizarre fiction i think so yeah. yeah 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 absolutely um so i mean the characters in it are great i love dylan and his dad and especially andy <laughs> and uh i was gonna say that like you know the, the book starts out where they're in the yard and it's this this crazy texas heat and i know that you live in san antonio and i i live in the austin area so we're not too far from each other yeah. But uh, the the references that you make to Texas, I just love it. Like, you know, you talk about how hot it is here in the summer and how brutal the sun is. And I was wondering, did you get the idea for the story, uh, like being in your yard? Yeah, we were uh, digging up an old uh, golden so we could replace it. I was with uh, my fiance and her son, Dylan. <laughs> Yeah. And um, I just kind of said to him, man, what would happen if we found a body in this thing? Right. And he thought that was like a strange thing for me to suggest. And then I leaned closer and said, what if the body was you? <laughs> <laughs> and it just came, just continued spiraling uh, in my head from nil, you know, just one thing after one other. Yeah. Um, it's just such an awesome concept because like, I'm, I'm sorry, I've seen so many things like over and over again, but that was such a unique idea. I really love that. And then like, as the book goes on, the, the main characters have to kind of like figure out what the hell's going on yeah. and it takes them to a body farm. Mm -hmm. And now you said, um, cause here's how I, I listened to it on the ghoulish podcast, like mm -hmm. in installments. Yeah. And um, you mentioned body farms. You said that, you know, you could research them. I didn't want to end up on like a list. So I didn't research them. Okay. But, like, what, what what's the deal with body farms? Like, can you tell me about them? Yeah, I mean, I think I, ex I tried to explain what they are in the book, but there's one in um, San Marcos at the Texas State. Um, that's the one the book takes place at. Although I renamed it so I wouldn't get sued. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's basically you can donate your body to these places, and they study decomposition. So they leave the body out in different. Uh, scenarios to see how they decompose like uh, this body decomposes differently in sunlight compared to out of sunlight and so forth the one of the main reasons 
they do this is to help cops to to chill them in like a a time of death. Yeah. Because if you find a body at a certain time and it's at this stage of decomposition, then you could calculate how long it's probably been rotting and so forth. Yeah. It's just yeah. pretty fascinating, I think. I, yeah, I mean, that's the whole thing. That's the reason why I was even asking you about it. Because yeah. I was like, wait, is this real? Like, this oh, is yeah. legit. So, so what you described in the book is the reality. I mean, I haven't been on one. I haven't been to one myself. But, yeah. Um, I definitely exaggerated probably some of it. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, if you have a specific thing in mind you want to ask me about, I can tell you if I just made that up or not. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, no, honestly, I didn't know that they just like leave them out there to rot. Just, oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't want to spoil one yeah. part of the book, but yeah. So, so they do leave them out to rot. Sometimes they leave them in these cages so uh, animals can't get to them. But sometimes they leave them out to see how they decompose with the animals. Oh. It's uh, crazy. Um, I, I did reach out to the one and by us to yeah. see if I could come out and walk around when yeah. I was writing the book. And the guy <laughs> emailed me back and said that that would be disrespectful to the specimens they have. Yeah. I thought, that's rude. <laughs> You said when you were, you know, hosting the, when you were playing the installments on your show, on your podcast, that you thought that this audiobook version was the, the best version of the book. So, so John Wayne Commonale, you said that he did such a great job, and I completely agree. Mm -hmm. um, how did you find him? Oh, he's just a friend. I've known him a long time. He, uh, oh. he, writes, he writes books. He does conventions all around the, the country. He's, he travels a lot. And... Within the past couple of years, he began doing audiobook stuff as well. So he, I know he he reads well. He has a good southern accent, so that's who I I knew he would be perfect for it. He, I think, he's a Houston boy, but he recently moved to Las Vegas. I think I'm not positive. We haven't talked in a in a while. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say like, is does that his ac natural accent? But that, that's yeah. awesome. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you, you released that book on your podcast, and you also released We Need to Do Something as well. Yeah. Uh, what was your logic behind putting those books out for everyone to hear for free? Oh, I just I just think if I just I think books and movies and all types of uh, adults should be free for those who can't afford it. So it's just my way of making it available. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a great idea, and, and just like anyone can listen to it. You know, I I, yeah. I want to recommend it to some of my friends too. And not like Danny, who you've talked to before on this mm -hmm. channel, he just pretty pretty much listens to audiobooks. And so, mm -hmm. like, I think I can get him to listen to it too. Um, I was gonna say though that you have another book coming out in uh March, right? Abnormal yes. Statistics. Now, you shared abnormal statistics with me, but I haven't finished it. Uh, what I will say though is that I started reading it and I was absolutely digging that as well. Um, it comes from a very personal place, right? Yeah. And so um it reminded me of a Q&A that you were doing where uh, one of your fans asked you, how did you become such a good writer? And you kind of told your backstory of your writing experience. And, uh, you know, I'd be kind of honored if you would, would mind sharing it with us. I thought it was almost like an yeah. origin story. Yeah. When I was a kid, a little after I was 12, we, um, we lost the house that we lived in and we moved into a hotel and until I was 16, so between 12 and 16, we lived in Villiers Hotels around Northwest Indiana. I did not go to school. I uh, went out of touch with all of my friends and so forth. And I just stayed in the room reading and writing pretty much nonstop for like three and a half years. And I think just that type of experience definitely gave me some leeway on sharpening my, uh, my craft, I guess compelled to what most people do because i think most people don't really get serious about writing until uh, the 20s most likely right. and i was already uh trying to um you know get published when i was a teenager and just getting rejected and rejected and rejected at a really young age and continuing to uh just try and improve so i think just the time i spent in the hotel probably is why i been doing these uh like as you said you because i'm only 29 I'm, i have all this already going on i've just been doing this a while <laughs> yeah, yeah i just began before most people do i think yeah i'm gonna finish abnormal statistics i definitely was enjoying it oh, thank um, you. 
Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, thank you for coming on. If you want, Mike, I always have people just plug stuff at the very end. I know you were talking about your Kickstarter, but if you want to tell people where they can find you and essentially where they can access all the ghoulish stuff. Yeah, you can just go to ghoulishbooks.com. That will take us to the main website. I have a, a newsletter I do called the new <laughs> the ghoulish times.substack.com. And you can just go to Kickstarter and probably type in ghoulish, and I imagine it will pop up. I'm not completely positive how to direct people to that at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, no problem, man. Yeah. So, uh, Max, we love having you on, and uh, we'd love to have you on in the future, too. And I'm looking forward to being at the Ghoulish Book Festival. Soon. I look forward to seeing you, man. Thank you. <laughs>